The Secrets of Technology is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Technology. Hi, I'm Dom Bettinelli, and you're listening to The Secrets of Technology, where we discuss the technology news that's important to you from a uniquely Catholic point of view. And joining me today on the panel are Pat Scott. Hi, Pat. Good evening, or good day, as this case may be. <laughs> Whenever you're listening to this. And Father Andrew Kinstetter. Hi, Father Andrew. Hey, Dom. So uh, let's get right into our top stories of the day of the of the day of the week. And uh, hey, surprise, surprise! Neither of our top stories, our big segments, have anything to do with the virus, which is good. Finally, uh, there's some of that later. But uh, our first one has to do with everybody's favorite social media behemoth, Facebook, and they've got a couple of new things going on. Uh, one is Facebook gaming app. Uh, so there's a they have a new. Facebook gaming app, which is available for Android, not yet for iOS. It's going through the App Store approval process, probably taking out all the spyware that uh, that uh, Facebook puts in there for you. And uh, but uh, and apparently, it's it's basically all of the same Facebook games that have been there. All the casual gaming stuff, you know, words with friends and Farmville. I, I mean, you know, say Farmville is still a thing, but if it's, <laughs> if it is, it's in there uh, as well as um, a Facebook streaming uh, comp- competitor to Twitch and YouTube gaming, I guess. Uh, and that's kind of it. What do you think of Facebook gaming? Is it, does it make sense? Does it, who's it for is the big question what do you think father andrew uh i think it's facebook trying to do too much yeah Uh, you know i i think if facebook is trying to be just uh you know a a way to connect people it's it's a it is a way to connect people but it's i i think twitch and youtube are going to rule the streaming platforms and um I really don't like Facebook for gaming. We're already right. sharing too much information with Facebook to begin with. Yeah. And the games are just going to probe more and more and more. So, I mean, I do play, in fact, when COVID-19 hit, I downloaded, re-downloaded Word, Words with Friends and and mm-hmm. have played that a little bit. But I had played that years ago. Right. But I, I don't really see it taking off as they maybe hope it will. Okay. How about you, Pat? Does anybody need words, uh, Facebook gaming? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I tried <laughs> Words with Friends. And yes, Dom, way back in the day, I played Farmville. But, you know, yep. I just kind of got burnt out and said, this is not what I want. It's just yeah. not responsive enough. And it doesn't have the breadth of games of the type I needed or I was looking for. So I don't see any of my clients using it. Yeah, it's a very strange play for Facebook, given that they went and bought the VR gaming, you know, or VR headset company, Oculus. Which they've done really good with. Exactly. And and then they come up with this, which is just it feels sort of like shovelware, like, um, okay, we've got these weird, you know, the weird Facebook casual games. So let's throw some of that in there and Facebook game groups like so Facebook groups that have to do with games. Let's throw that in there. And then um, let's let's throw in a you know Facebook Live thing for gamers. Let's throw that in there, and it just kind of you know hammer it all together. And here's your Facebook gaming. It just it feels weird, a, a weird product. And and I I wouldn't be surprised if some of this, and I I'm sure it's been in the works longer than the last couple months, but they may have just tried to push it through in the midst of all of this uh, COVID-19 stuff because yeah. the the people on Twitch and have streaming games have just gone off the charts because, you know, everybody's at home. And so, you know, I, I'm, I don't even, I don't want to watch people stream games and I'm seeing everybody on yeah. Twitter streaming things. And I'm just like, no, I need less, <laughs> but, but people are bored. And, and so that's, that's exactly what they're doing. So I wonder if Facebook is, maybe pushing it through, pushing through an unpolished sort of idea product in order to try to capitalize on that. 
I, I feel like it's one of those things. Let's throw a bunch of things against the wall and see what we can, <laughs> what can stick, you know, just here's the thing. Let's just try it. You know, it's, it's what it kind of feels like. I mean, the whole streaming, like watching people play video games. I mean, the thing I relate to being an old man is, it is like going to the arcade to watch the mm. really good like Pac-Man yep. or Galaga guy, yep. you know, get that high score again, standing next to him as he played over and over again. And that's kind of what it is, but it's not for me now. There, there's something lost, though, by watching a streamer online. I, I know a lot of people really enjoy it, but me and my brother just this past week were playing through a game. Um, I, uh, <laughs> one of the Resident Evil games that I refuse yeah. to play on my own, but he <laughs> he, he would yeah he he kind of he he sat with me, uh you know. But there's something about a shared experience when you're physically together, or the arcade, or uh -huh. you know those sorts of things that I don't find the appeal of just being one of thousands of viewers on a on a Twitch feed. But right. that's just me. I've tried. And frankly, the the only person I've really actually watched at length playing is Father Roderick, because okay. he's a yep. friend. I know him, yep. and yep. and I've, and he. I don't own a PlayStation Four, and he's playing Battlefront Two, and I sit there and go, "Oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could be <laughs> Kylo Ren." You know, so uh, there's a there's a little of that, but I just wouldn't it wouldn't be a normal part of entertainment for me. But but, you know, that's to say that's that's a huge thing for a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. And frankly, there's a bit of the um, if you're a pretty girl who likes the game, you can do really well on it. Let's just put it that way. And yeah. there's an element of that in there, too. That's the way the world is. So uh, so Facebook gaming, probably not for me or you guys so <laughs> so the other thing that facebook's got is they have uh, another hey it's everybody's stuck at home and let's throw another product out there so everybody to, to kind of fill the need is they've they have a zoom competitor so facebook messenger has always had not always has for a long time had a video chat component well they've basically just made it a zoom competitor by putting it a 50 user limit so you can have a facebook messenger room with up to 50 people in it um which you know it's what's the advantage over zoom well the big advantage from my point of view is that it lets you uh put it in this in your facebook news feed and you could you, you know you could advertise it and people can jump into your messenger room from there but uh, again is this do, do you see this as something people will use instead of zoom or group facetime or skype well for me and for my clients the, the nice thing about zoom is that a lot of people could participate in a movie without i mean in a zoom without having to sign up for an account mm -hmm. and i know that facebook had said with messenger you could do this as a guest but my feeling is is the only people who are going to want to go to facebook are the people who are already on it the other people yeah. are going to say uh-uh I don't want to use Facebook. I've never had a Facebook and I don't want to do it now. So right. I don't see that as a real big advantage. I just see it as being an alternative like Google's got theirs and, and Microsoft's got theirs. Everybody wants to jump into the bandwagon now. Right. They want to get some of that. Um, I'm not even sure. Well, there's no really money in it, but because uh, nobody's really exposure. Yeah. It's by getting people onto the platform, you're getting people to use Facebook and thus see their ads and all that sort of stuff. Father, do you see any advantage? I mean, is this, uh, is, are you a Facebook messenger user? Does that, is that something that pops up for you? Uh, Facebook messenger? Yes, because I'm, I am involved in a number of just different groups. And so a lot of the group chats go through messenger. Um, so I, I definitely use that. And especially uh, as, as a priest, there's a lot of parishioners who, don't have my personal cell phone number, but they do have my Facebook. Right. And so they can message me directly on, on Facebook. So I, I definitely appreciate Facebook Messenger. I don't particularly have a desire to jump into the, the, the video part of it. Um, right. and, and, and so I, I guess I would look at it as an alternative to, to Google or Zoom or Skype. But my gut would just have me go to one of those other services. For me, yeah. For me, Facebook Messenger is uh, like I, I, I use Messenger for a few select people in general. 
Uh, mostly my, I get unsolicited attachments from people <laughs> that I don't have much contact with otherwise. And I just, the, the idea of, of, of getting, of just video chatting while I'm just, you, when I'm using Facebook, it's for a very specific reason. I'm either doing work stuff like posting shows there or, or, you know, communicating with listeners, or I just want to jump in, see what's new with friends and family or whatever, and scroll for a little bit. I'm not there to, I don't know. It just, I mean, I, I could, I guess I could, you know, go in there and set up a room and use that for whatever I would use zoom for, but I've already got zoom and Skype and Google meet. I just, I just don't need it's it, when you have too many choices, it becomes, ah, and it's got to be, I assume it's got to be more geared towards the personal use than a business use where zoom we've been using for, for a lot of business meetings, but yeah. you wouldn't, you wouldn't hold a, financial council meeting over facebook live or right. facebook messenger no, um, no but we did over zoom this morning well and the other thing is is there have been so many of my friends and colleagues and people on facebook that have been cloned by fake facebook accounts yeah. and i know my daughter yeah. was one recently yes, yes and the thing is is it's it's really hard to keep somebody from doing it the way facebook has it so that you can set up an account you can clone their picture you can clone their friends and there's nothing to stop them and right. so there's really no way to prevent this that i know of and it's getting worse so, no, I don't really want to use Facebook Messenger as the way to do my video because how do I know it's really my friend? That's true. That's true. And another interesting data point. So I I, uh, I volunteer with the Boy Scouts of America, and we've been starting to do uh, virtual merit badge classes because we can't get together in person to do it. So one, of, I had the first class the other night, and one of the parts of the BSA policy is that you should not use video chatting on any social media platform. Uh, as for part of the safety pol and protection policies, youth protection, um, for obvious reasons, uh, they they want to make sure that you're only using business class communications uh, media, and that makes sense. So Zoom or Skype or Google Meet or your Hangout or, or I guess Google Meet now. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, so it's it yeah I I just you know. This is just more to me. It's one it one step up from Snapchat. <laughs> just, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah. So FaceTime. Sorry, Facebook. Your two new products are just not for us. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about another thing that folks may have seen in the news. Uh, if you have an iPhone or an iPad, um, I don't think this was a Mac OS issue, but a uh, a, a security researcher company, bug hunting uh, firm. Claim that they found uh, an exploit, a zero-day exploit, and we'll talk about that in a second, in Apple Mail that would allow someone to uh, take over your mail uh, without any intervention on your part. It didn't require you to do anything. Just They just had to send you an email, and they could take over. Which is, that would, that's a very scary idea that anyone would be vulnerable to that. Well, not so fast. Uh, Apple says... Uh, that this is not a, an exploit. They found a simple bug. There's no evidence it could be that it has been or could be used to do what these people say. And other researchers have kind of jumped in on Apple side. So, what do you get? What do you both think of this this uh, claim of a of a zero day exploit? Well, one of one of my tech colleagues called me on it and and asked me about it. He's not an iOS person, except just casually with an iPad. And he was saying, oh, well, it's been shown by this security company that this is the problem. And I started researching it, and it's like, no, Apple security for your iOS device trumps that. Yes, there may have been a bug, and somebody may have noticed, yes, mail crashed. It doesn't mean that anybody could come in and take over your machine. Right. And so I immediately, that same day, was able to send it back to him to say, no, no, this is not a widespread bug. It's, I mean, a widespread threat. It was a bug. Apple and several other people have said, no, it was misreported, even though the original company kept insisting that it was an exploit, and they swear that there were people using it. So what's the difference between a bug and an exploit? An exploit is something that people can use to get into the operating system to steal credentials or steal data. A bug is just something that happens that causes a program to crash or crater, and it could be used as an exploit if if it was the sec other security was not valuable enough or as, as stringent enough. 
Okay. So at least that's the way my take on it. I don't know whether you've got another opinion. Yeah, that sounds like a a, a an exploit can be a, a part of an exploit can be a bug, but not every bug is an exploit. That's exactly um, an exploit is a way to get in that a proven way to get in and do things that you shouldn't be that someone shouldn't be able to do. Um, what's your take on this one, Father? Do you any any thoughts on this? I think it should force us to kind of get a look at the big picture a little bit. Um, and something, you know, like Pat that you mentioned is just be careful of reading the headlines and and just immediately assuming that what's being said in whatever article you're reading is absolutely true. And then letting that fear, you know, prompt you to just freak out about it, mm. you know, so be diligent, be prudent, do some research. Um, Apple's pretty notorious for locking things down and, and, you know, so it's, right. this is probably not quite as, as dire as they're proposing it to be. But then the other thing to just, um, this reminds me over and over again is just make sure that your software's up, up to date. Yep. Uh, because often these bugs are noticed by Apple or these, these white hackers um, and they are brought to Apple's attention and they fix them and they push them out in the software updates. So, right. you know, just just make sure that you're set to automatically download those or or manually go in. But uh, just, yeah, be again, be prudent and diligent. But I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't freak out about it. Keep your well, it's true day. that that yeah. unpatched bugs can become exploitable. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Uh, and, and it's good when people point them out. But there's also the. The, those types of people that will cast aspersions on Apple and or Microsoft and or whatever j just for the publicity of it. Right. You know, and yes. that's a shame, too. Well, everyone's talking about Zek Ops. I'm not saying they're doing that's what they're doing here, but, you know, it's possible. Uh, Apple has said that the bug is fixed already in the upcoming 13.4.5 for iOS and iPadOS. So uh, as soon as that's out, uh, make sure to up update. Um, yeah, keep all. That's a big thing these days. Whenever there are new security updates, and most operating system updates have security updates in them these days. Like you said, Father, do it right away because you don't want to get caught out um, with old, unpatched software. Um, so, uh, all right, that's that's good. I think that's about uh, enough to say about that. Although there is another bug in iOS that is a little bit more it's not really an exploit it's a bug but it's it, it and it's a it's sort of obscure but apparently there's a if if someone sends you a, um, a text in iOS with using characters from the Cindy language Cindy is a language in uh, let's see where is that in Pakistan from a, an area province of Pakistan so it's only spoken in Pakistan and a little bit of India uh, but if someone sends you a text in that language even in just the notification even if it's like on your lock screen it'll crash your phone we've seen this before with other right. texts that would crash phones and again it's just a, a fault a flaw in the handling of the the language in, in right. the interpretation of it in the operating system right so yeah and, and people were having fun doing that before, you know, pranking each other with <laughs> with that. And that's right. a shame that people would do that. But so I'm glad to hear that uh, that that hopefully this should be patched all, as well pretty quickly. I want to know what all the Cindy speakers have been doing with their iPhones for all this time. <laughs> have they Maybe not been texting? Getting iPhones, they've been having Androids before. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm going to guess there's not a whole lot of Cindy iPhone users out there. But if this has been going around, so uh, not so this not a big deal. Uh, just if, if your phone crashes after some, someone sends you a text, uh, immediately Reboot. block that person for being a jerk. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So uh, let's uh, look at our next headline. Um, Speaking of iOS 13.5, we, well, we, we was just talking about 13.4.5 is going to have the fix for the email bug, but 13.5 has some interesting new features, and one of them is going to be a way to help those of us who have iPhones that have Face ID unlock our phones when we're out and about with masks on this is this is our coronavirus headline uh, of the of the day our third world problem <laughs> this is our new uh, this is the world we live in now like if everyone has noticed well we don't have half face id where it just it recognizes you from the bridge of your nose up it's now uh, you know it needs to see your whole face so what to do well apple has now uh in 
their the beta software that's coming coming to all of us soon is um it, it it's not it doesn't it's not like a face id that can recognize you under the mask what it does is it just makes it faster switch from i can't see your face to just enter the passcode so mm-hmm. yeah, we're right all... now I have to tap several times and then it says, oh, enter passcode. <laughs> right, exactly. So just, you know, we're back to entering our passcodes and, and everyone's like, why didn't I get an iPhone SE with a touch ID instead? <laughs> but, These are uh, just quality of life improvements. Yes, oh, but with yes. the gloves, you see the touch ID wouldn't work either. <laughs> exactly. We need, a, we need a new ID thing of uh, 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 Apple. It was a retina scan is what we How need. How about <laughs> an elbow, a little blood on the elbow? <laughs> you know, yeah, take a blood does. sample. <laughs> right. yeah. So uh, actually in a related thing, do you both find yourselves using Apple Pay uh, uh, at all? Uh, I find I want to use Apple Pay wherever I go. I think we've had this conversation recently. Do. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but so I just I just tap tap and then enter the passcode and 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 that works. Yeah, I've but been doing my watch. It. I've been doing the watch oh, as much as I can because I hadn't thought about that. Because then you don't have to to enter a code or anything. You just you you double double pump on the uh, button on the side and hold it to it, and there's no touch in anything unless it's one of those. Okay, silly thank you for stores. reminding me because yeah. uh, I had forgotten all about that. Yep, much much better. But uh, Father, you I think you remember you saying you don't get a lot of opportunity. Yeah, like I, I think I mentioned Subway's about the only place that I notice it <laughs> right. explicitly. Um, you that know. could become burdensome to depend upon one place right. and going back a lot. Well, and, and I, I end up doing things like, you know, if I'm, um, heaven forbid, I, I go to Starbucks. Often, you know, if I'm in a rush, I'll just use the app and pay for it, order it through right, the yeah. app. So then still there's there's that no actual contact. But yeah, you know, I, so apps are really good to, to pay for things, too. <laughs> Right, right, but th- that's the thing. It was like with with the fa- with the Face ID problem I was having is I couldn't unlock the phone to do the Apple Pay without mm-hmm. uncovering my face. So the w- using the watch means I don't have to uncover my face in order to use Apple Pay, which is a uh, that's great. There. Yeah. Um, all right. So and so that was that that and there's a few other things in coming up in iOS 13.5 beta, including uh, the first parts of that. Um, API that Apple and Google are developing for contact tracing, so that the the initial testing of that is in there, but there's not there's, there's nothing really that for the end user to worry about on that. That's not nothing there yet. Uh, then uh, there's a story, uh, Pat. You you met, let us uh, know about about how Google wants to separate the browser and Chrome OS updates to extend your Chromebook's life. What's that all about? Well, one of the things that I was real surprised with was I've had several customers over the last couple of years get Chromebooks. And then at one point, one of them said, uh, it won't work anymore. It can't update anymore. And therefore, it's become end of life for it. And oh, I wow. Went, really? And they said, yeah. And so what, what you know, the 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 updates for Google Chrome, they want you to keep updating the browser as much as possible to keep it up to date. For security. But that was yeah. right. But because they, so the same update process was handling both the Chromebook and the Chrome OS, I mean, uh, the, the Chrome browser updates, then it meant that if they were trying to keep you up to date on the latest versions of the, of the browser, that was impacting the uh, ability to... to uh, in, when they were pushing out the Chrome OS updates, they they weren't able to to separate those out as easily. So now they're saying they're just like uh, iPad OS and the phone OS. They separated them so okay. that you, you won't you know you can get to a certain level of the OS and it won't stop working. Right, it'll stay at that OS le- the latest OS level it it can work with, right. but it will but it will keep updating the browser. Yes. Uh, for security, that's good. Right. That's good. Yeah, we. My, I said before, my daughter has a Chromebook, and that's one of the things. Like, they're inexpensive, but not that inexpensive. Where I want to have to replace it, you know, really quickly because of the OS won't update. But uh, uh, that's good to know. So, um, about how long do does a cr- Chromebook last these days? Do you know? Oh, as I say, it seems like the first one. When I had a client run into that, it was a three year. At that okay. point, their b- machine became unusable. They could not run it after that point. Wow. And uh, so I thought, that's that's kind of stinky. Right. Uh, and I know that- even on the Android o- I- OS, I've got an older uh, Android. To me, it wasn't that old. But all of a sudden, it's like, well, it won't update the, o- the operating system anymore. 
and it was only like two or three years old, where Apple keeps going a long time on their updates. Right. I think the oldest ones that will update to the to iOS 13 is I, uh, iPhone 7, or is it 6S? Uh, I think. I think the six S still will. Uh, okay. I, the six, I think, was the the, was the uh, one yeah. the one that it got stuck on in the old SE as uh, as opposed to the yeah. new SE. Yeah. Right. It doesn't update the old SE doesn't update. So. And the biggest thing there is apps that you won't you want often won't go unless you've got the one of the later updates. Right. Right. That we ran into that here. We've got a bunch of very old iPads, and all the kids want to play the Apple Arcade games. Uh, Sneaky Sasquatch oh. is the big one in my house right now. <laughs> uh, and the only we only got a couple of new new enough iPads that can do that, and that's become an issue of we you know my I'm iPad. Sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. And well, <laughs> we've we've solved some of that by shuffling some things around and. Uh, some of that stimulus went to buy an, an another iPad for one of the children to have as a, a school work computer, but also because it plays Apple Arcade. <laughs> so we, we've kind of pushed off the problem a little bit. That is cheaper than a new MacBook. Oh yeah. Mm. I, well, we got we got the uh, the the least expensive iPad, which which is uh, what was it three 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 twenty nine three twenty nine yeah so. What a great deal that is, frankly. It's, I mean, the, it the really resale is. market. It's a good... Yeah, right. It's a, and it's the new one, which is why the resale market for iPads is terrible because you can't sell your old iPad, or, I mean, regular iPads for any, th any money because a brand new regular iPad is so cheap. iPad Pros are still, you can still get some good money for reselling those, but the, uh, the regular iPads are not. But, uh, but they last forever. Like, like I said, I mean, those iPad 2s are still running that we've got. They just don't run modern you know, operating system. So, uh, but that's it's interesting. So I'm glad that Google has separated those out so you can get more life out of your Chromebook and right. still are safe when you're using the internet with that Chromebook. Um, so speaking of Google and Facebook Messenger rooms, there's also Google Meet, which is their which is not a online butcher sh service <laughs> <laughs> or dating app, which is a whole other thing. No, uh, Meet M E E T, it, and so it's. It's the successor to Hangouts. I'm I've never been really certain what the difference is, except for like some of the initial interface seems simplified for like how you get into a meeting and how you schedule them. But once you're in it, it's basically Hangouts. So I'm not, but now they coexist, and I'm not sure why these things exist together in the same universe. But uh, but now, but for a long time, Google Meet was just for anyone. You had to have a G Suite account. So G Suite was you. You it used to be called Google business for domains, like, yeah, or a business account, or a education account, uh, or nonprofit account, which is what SQPN has. But but now, anyone who has a Gmail account or a Gmail address can have a Google Meet uh, service, and they can have up to up to a hundred people. You can have free meetings of up to a hundred people for any length of time. Though after September 30th, it may restrict meeting length to 60 minutes. Now, keep in mind, Zoom is free, but only for 40-minute meetings. Although they've been, sometimes you can, you get to that 40 minutes and go, hey, we've decided to throw you a bone and you can keep going. But that's no guarantee they're going to do that for every single time you have a meeting. Uh, so this is kind of a big deal that uh, Google is doing this. Um, Google also doesn't have the reputation that Zoom had of poor security and uh, iffy relationship with the Chinese Communist government and some things like that. <laughs> but uh, so do, have either of you used Google Meet at all? Well, since I didn't have a business account for Google, I did have a little test Google th three user G, G Suites and I've used the Hangout stuff with my son. But uh, no, I haven't had a chance to play with uh, the Google Meet yet. Yeah. Father? And I've used I've used Google Hangouts, but that would have been years ago. Okay. Skype is kind of my primary video conference or Zoom at the moment. Yeah, I use Hangouts a lot for SQPN board meetings. We use that for some reason. We've always used that instead of Skype. I'm not sure why. It's just tradition, uh, tradition. And uh, <laughs> well, it's so, just what you start with is what you stay with. Right. We have a room there yeah. that we've always used. Here's the link. Everyone knows what the link is, and we just go back to it every month. But um, I used Google Meet for a, actually a scout meeting we did, and the interface is a little different. Um, not bad. It's pretty simple. 
Um, it supposedly has some better controls to prevent things like zoom bombing, which we've talked about, and some other things like that. So um, you can um, you can limit to only people who've received uh, who you've sent an invite to. They're the only ones who can get in. Whereas, like with Zoom, if you've got a link and the password, you're in, which can, which is the problem. Uh, this one is you no, you only you have to have been pre-approved by the host. Some of the things like that. Uh, the one difference is that Zoom lets you have a uh, even on the free version a, a landline dial-in or or phone dial-in, whereas uh, you don't get that on uh, the Google Google Meet. So. Although recently the uh, dial-in has been disabled on a lot of the Zoom calls that I've been on, they'll say because of COVID and the uh, the uh, amount of traffic that they're getting, they're mm. dis- you know that that dial-in is not available. I see. I see. Probably with a paid account, you could get it. I guess. Yes. Right. Oh. But I've got you okay. know I've got the free account. Because I was going to say on our finance council we had a dial-in, but we we I think we must have the paid account just temporarily right. for all of this. Right, right. I'm, and I'm they didn't guess. always uh, limit it because I was on a call where we did have one phone call come in and uh, accidentally, actually, but uh, <laughs> it, because she didn't know how to use Zoom. But uh, at, later on, when I, lo- I logged in on another Zoom call, I see, saw the little banner at the top saying, f- f- as a temporary measure, uh, this is not going to allow audio calls. Interesting, interesting. Uh, one thing that I, I see that they they've added is the Google Zoom I'm sorry, the Zoom, not Google Zoom, Zoom style galleries. So there's the two different ways where um, Hangouts has always been whoever's talking, their picture is like big and in the center, and then all the others are small. And gallery is everyone is equal size, like the Brady Bunch thing, <laughs> yeah. which if you're, you only know that if you're over a certain age, I, I think. But, 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 uh, I, I actually or prefer the, a lot of reruns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I'll take the center square to block uh, <laughs> Hollywood squares. Uh, but I, I really prefer the gallery style because it's very distracting when like someone coughs or makes a noise yeah. and suddenly they're large on your screen. And you're like, well, wait, wait, I'm not listening to you. I'm listening to like we're as human beings, we're visual creatures visual. and we want to. You know, we're, whatever is biggest in our view is the thing we're hunting, or I'm sorry, or looking at. <laughs> hunting was what we used to do. Uh, so uh, I prefer the gallery thing where it, where it just highlights whoever's talking. I think that's a, l- a lot better. And that's one thing that uh, Google Meet has added. So I, I want to throw out there, this is sort of related, but not, re- uh, not unrelated. Have you heard of Zoom fatigue? No, tell me about it. Which Zoom fatigue, I totally can can totally understand and relate to and experience but zoom fatigue goes back to the fact that we are physical beings and we and we communicate both verbally but also non-verbally and so zoom fatigue is just the fact that when we when you're on a zoom call you aren't seeing the non-verbal cues from people or if they're slightly turned away from you or if they're leaning in to hear you more those nonverbal cues, we sort of ha- our brain has to work overtime when we're on a zoom call to try to match all of those things together and and so you might find yourself on an hour long Zoom conference call and find yourself just way more fatigued, exhausted mentally than you would yeah. if you were physically next to a person in a, in the same kind of meeting. So be careful with Zoom, too, I That's guess is the totally point. a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, w- this happens with what we do, podcasting. Yep. So we podcast with we, we record our voices, but we, we do this over video with, with it, we, we use Skype. But like when I. When I record Mysterious World with Jimmy Aiken, we'll do four episodes a day in in a day. We'll do a whole month's worth. And those are over an hour each. So we're like four or five hours doing this. And by the end of that, I'm wiped. I'm exhausted. <laughs> uh, we take breaks, but still it is it is very draining. But yes, it's because we have to pay much more mental energy out to to pay attention to it. And I guess I would throw that out as a as a caution to people because of all of this COVID nineteen stuff. We are we've gone to Zoom and all those things as the the way to communicate with with people. And there's almost a, this push that these should continue in the same way when we all can get back physically together. But yeah. I I mean I think they should continue in some form. But in I, some I want to I want to right I want yeah. I want to get back to like being able to physically be with one another because that just Right. It works so much better and less mental fatigue, I guess. Right. 
Well, and it's the difference between a phone call and a video call. A phone call, I I can be talking and and participating in a conversation, but my you know my hands might be doing something else. In a video call, all my focus is on that video, and that's mm. what I'm finding on Zoom. It's like I'm trying to keep all of these people in focus mm-hmm. at once, and it is much more draining. And you don't want to be like looking off. <laughs> you know, right. Yeah, it, you don't want to be impolite. Yeah, yeah, it's really apparent when someone's like, like not paying attention. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm doing, I'm, I'm looking off into the into the distance where while uh, uh, while I'm doing that, you can't, you can't see me do that. Thankfully, thing. with Zoom, you can, you can just uncheck the the show video option, and and <laughs> uh, yeah, I can Although, hide. <laughs> well, that's one of the things is I I had my scouts and I like all these you know twelve, thirteen, fourteen year old boys in the thing, and half of them had it had their video off, and I'm like, which is fine. I mean, that's their privacy, mm-hmm. but I'm like. Are they even there? Like, <laughs> have they walked <laughs> away? One of the things I heard about is some people complaining that they're in more meetings with Zoom, yeah. you know, at home now than they ever had at work. People are just like, hey, hey you're there. Let's uh, like I can schedule for meetings. We'll just meeting, 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 meeting. And they're like, I can't get anything done. I'm in Zooms all day. Uh, and there's a danger of, of that where it becomes too easy to pigeonhole someone and frankly this was an issue i had when i worked in an office because this it was the same thing with people just stopping by your office and standing in the door and chatting with you which is one of the reasons or when i didn't have a door standing at the edge of my cubicle one of the reasons why i always pushed my boss to let me have an office with a door so i could concentrate uh Mm -hmm. i shared an office with with my friend george who was very gregarious and very popular and people were constantly stopping by to talk to him and i'd be like headphones on hide behind my big computer (laughs) monitor and just try to concentrate but uh so the the, it's the distractions come in many forms whether we're all together or whether we're apart uh so that's that's part of it it's there's no panacea in in the working from home thing but uh, that is a good point that is a good point about that thank you that ne- yeah. Yeah, and and that necessity for we, we do need to remember we need to be together again someday mm-hmm. so let's uh move from uh talking about uh the world of work to the world of entertainment and uh, this was very interesting who knew that the trolls movie would be would be what destroys the theater industry the movie theater industry so trolls world tour was due to come out this spring and because of everything that happened uh the universal pictures decided to release its streaming and this has become a big point of contention father you you recommend that that we talk about this yeah what happened with this so so basically with all the theaters shut down they didn't want to delay the release of trolls world tour so what they did was they just put it out there to be um to be streamed but not like on a streaming service you had to you had to pay for it to to download it and rent it um and what happened was within the first 3 weeks of of the Trolls World Tour debut they racked up 100 million dollars wow in revenue and to just put that in comparison the original Trolls film in 2016 made 116 million um, in its first uh, three weeks of theatrical release. So um, this is, yeah, they're, they're making an equivalent amount of money by releasing it on demand versus the movie theater. Yeah. But the, the point of contention is that Universal has made, an, made a statement saying that in the future, they're going to release it concurrently both in the theaters and um, to be streamed on demand. And then AMC came back with a policy that says that they are not going to show Universal Pictures movies at all in the future because of this policy change. So, Mm. uh, yeah, it's going to it's going to be shake things up for a little bit. And I'm not sure where it's all going to fall. It's pretty interesting because for several years now, there has been this question in Hollywood. Why are we? releasing into theaters and not releasing online simultaneously on a pay-per-view basis where we could like like we said make a lot of money and a lot of people would rather just stay home and watch it on their big screens that they have at home with their home theater systems uh with their families instead of having to go out to a theater and i I still like the theater experience but i 
I get that. I mean, I, I, I would watch a lot more movies if I could watch them at home streaming a day and date of release, which is why, obviously why the theaters companies don't yeah. want that to happen. Uh-huh. It would basically destroy their business. Yeah, and there are a lot of employees, whether they're the the people who are running the the snack bar or the people taking tickets or the you know the bill. There's a lot of buildings out there that are going to all of a sudden have no no income to support them. So I understand that, but it's kind of like well, you know, sometimes there's an idea whose time is now past. I know, and uh, you know, yeah. if they could say, well, reserve. Uh, those theaters for the, the the big screen events that you really get a lot out of on a big screen. Right. And But maybe, maybe not the exactly simultaneous release, maybe three weeks release or four weeks release, you know, uh, time it a little bit later. Yeah. That might solve part of the problem. The people who want to see Star Wars on the big screen immediately <laughs> go see it. Right. But those who can wait a month, okay, so they can see it on, you know, in a, in a month. And I think it's sort of, uh, for me, it wouldn't change anything if it went straight to streaming or the theater, but I'm also fairly independent. I don't have a family and kids. So for me, I'm still going to go to the theater because I love the theater experience. I love the popcorn. Um, And there's something to be said about the shared experience of seeing the new Star Wars movie for the first time with a bunch of other people who haven't seen it for the first time. There's something that you can't replace there that, you know, if you watch it at home and it's streaming, it's cool, but you you miss all the the excitement of the people around you. So for me, it wouldn't change anything, but I, I could see, you know, families with with, you know, a number of kids where it's going to be cheaper for them to just stay at home and make their own popcorn and yeah. stream it and they'll get just as much enjoyment out of it at home as they would maybe in the theater. So I think you're going to be you're, th- those things are targeting two different groups of people. Like if someone likes a theater experience, they're going to go regardless of whether it's streaming or not. Right. When I took my family to see uh, Star Wars, the the Rise of Skywalker, there's seven of us. Yep. <laughs> and those kids. It was, <laughs> it was it was like I don't know like a hundred dollars for us yep. to go to the theater. Like and we got like a a. A, two, a tub of popcorn, just one, and <laughs> a couple bottles of water, and that you know it was like a hundred dollars for all of us to go. Yeah. So we don't go to the theaters. Whereas to stream, like I think Trolls was like twenty dollars or something like that. Yep. I, th- I think the, yep. the the stuff they were late in the stream at home, that's a whole different experience. Now, uh, I think Trolls, this Trolls World Tour, that might be why it did as well as it did because families it's a Mm -hmm. families are the ones who would go see it. So they're like, hop on this. I'm not going to go to the theater and spend all that money to go see trolls world tour, but I'll, I'll spend a lot, a lot less to do this. But if it were, you know, for the big blockbusters for Marvel or one of these others. Yeah. Uh, Like I've noticed that a lot of theaters have started to, to find other revenue streams to, to kind of supplement. Like they've got, the the food they have restaurant quality food and and you know beer and wine and that sort of stuff uh when father chip and i go to the movies we do you know when we do coffee and cinema you know we usually go at a meal time and we'll get we'll get lunch and then we'll we'll be watching the movie and, and, and you know it's a whole thing so there's that and i and they you know they rent theaters out and that sort of stuff so they're trying to find other revenue streams but i i hate to you know i hate to say like i i don't want to I can't afford to subsidize the theater industry, you know, with my family, you know. And so for me, the choice is watch it at home when it's once it's available to rent, you know, or and, and only go for very few movies that I really want to see in the theater. Before I was doing coffee and cinema, I saw one or two movies a year in the theater. Usually one of them a Star Wars movie mm-hmm. <laughs> of some sort. Uh, but that's about it. But, you know. I hate to say it, but I, I kind of want the streaming thing. <laughs> yeah, but I, I could see where you could delay it a little bit, you know, like a, a week or two. Yeah. Or, you know, and then they could still get the big bucks for when it opens. Right. And then the, the rest of the people who wouldn't be going to that opening could get it streaming. That's and true. I think, and that's, that's the issue is that Universal has said that they're going to release them concurrently. And so yeah. that's, that's where it's, I think, probably causing the most friction. Um. But but this is just sort of an open ended question. What will the theater experience be when everybody right. can go back together? Um, right. I'll make a plug for uh, I have gone to uh, the 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 drive in theaters. Yep. 
This Tribe would be an are awesome back. time for those to come. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is this, are those coming back now? <laughs> they should. Oh, they they, <laughs> they should. should. Yeah. I mean, not many places that are, are all are at all equipped for it, but right. um, I've been to a few of them and they're fun. Although you do miss the, you're all in the same exact theater together and excitement, right. but there's something cool about a drive-in too. And there's still a little bit of the energy. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't get the good audio quality that you get right. in a big theater experience. Although these days, the, I mean, with the technology, you could really have a- You could, You, you right. pay with, you get there and you pay on your phone. You know, to to mm, to get yep, and then yep. you get the audio pipe through your phone in through your audio, car play or whatever in your car audio system. Bring your own Bose portable speaker. That's right. You, yeah. you could get some. I mean, the, it's it's possible with the technology we have today. And frankly, I mean, given that, I think Texas is opening its theaters, right, Pat? They're they're opening. But they are allowing them to open with restrictions on how far people are, how many people yeah. in the theater, how far they sit apart, that type like, of thing. But twenty five percent of our theaters. I think it's 25% on all businesses is what they're saying, 25%. Okay. But, but there yeah. also has to be a distance thing, too. Right. But uh, they're not saying you must open. And sure. th like our Draft House Theater says, no, we're not going to do it. You know, it's just right. not right time to do it. And we don't think that uh, that the uh, that we we won't be making back our money with this reduced amount of people in the theater, it, you know. So, yeah, um, I can see where Alamo Draft House, which I've been to with you, we saw um, the uh, Last Jedi there together, the opening of that one when I was then visiting. And uh, I can see where their business model is. Yeah, this doesn't work for what we try to do, the experience we're trying to have if we try to limit that, that, you know, that the distancing and all that sort of stuff. So I can see that. And so it's yeah, it's tricky once we're not. Yeah, I. I could see where if if it's with Universal is not Disney. It's not like it's not one of the, the it's not the top two or three. So it's one thing for AMC to say to Universal, well, yeah, we're not going to put your movies in the theater. But if Disney says this, I can imagine uh, the theaters are shaking in their boots about if Disney decided to do this. Because if Disney did this, it's not like they could tell Disney, well, we're not going to show any of your Marvel or Star Wars or any of the Fox things or any. Yeah, this, that's not going to happen. <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right. We'll see how that goes. It's, it's, a, it's a very interesting times we're living in. So uh, let's move on to our picks of the week, shall we? Uh, Pat, I'll let you go first. Well, several weeks, or one of the times I was on, I talked about the, the Bose uh, head, uh, noise cancellation headphones that my brother mm -hmm. had, had, and I got one. And uh, then my other brother says, you know, I just got these $39 <laughs> Anchor uh, headsets, and they're really nice. And so I got one for one for upstairs, one for downstairs, you know, for my different purposes. And uh, actually, the, the, the Anchor ones are called Soundcore, and Anchor mm -hmm. sells them. And they're very good quality headsets for me, maybe not as much for music, but for voice type stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I've, I've really enjoyed them, and the microphone's better. And the oh. battery seems to be longer. Okay. So, uh, anyway, it's just it's an alternative. Not noise canceling, though, right? They are not specifically noise canceling. I think that they they may have some of that, but that's not their their primary thing. Okay, and they're forty bucks, which is yeah. a price you yeah you can't beat that price for Bluetooth wireless uh, headphones uh, over there over the year. Right, and yeah. you could plug a wire into them if you wanted to, but okay. but uh, they say I've I've really enjoyed them. I discovered that it's. It's not easy to find plug in, you know, wired earbuds right now. Uh, my daughter broke off the uh, headphones in her uh, iPhone jack. <laughs> she like she's, her, my her brother sat on it and broke it off. <laughs> uh, I had to get in there with my computer uh, little tweezers and pull the bits out. But uh, I had to. I wanted to buy replacements. I wasn't going to buy the Apple brand of replacements because they're overpriced. But uh, but it was yeah. It was it was not easy to find. Everything's wireless these days. But uh, but for forty bucks, it might be worth it. She needs it for when she's uh, doing her online classes too. So uh, with her right. Chromebook, so that that's why I wanted the wireless. But that those are good for forty bucks. That's that's hard to beat. All right, uh, Father Andrew, what do you have for us uh, this time? So today I am recommending an Aelkin, uh USB charging block. So it's it's a it's a little 
block that you plug into your wall outlet, but it has three USB ports on it. Mm. So you can charge your iPhone, you can charge your Android, you can charge any uh, USB uh, device that uses a USB cord to to charge. And what I found what I found it useful for is is I kind of have a, a charging station kind of on my dresser for my wireless headphones for my Apple Watch, um, and I've got a uh, a battery a uh, portable battery that I have there mm-hmm. too. So I have three different devices that need to be plugged in to charge. And um, I had kind of extension cords and a whole contraption <laughs> set up beforehand and um, ended up getting one of these and, uh, and it, and it works great. Uh, cool. Simplifies and cleans up my dresser and they come in cool colors. I got, I have oh, a green one. I like a green one. <laughs> it's um, a nice lime green. Different colors. And um, this particular one is $10 on Amazon. And you can get a pack of three for 15 So Wow. Um, very inexpensive. And and so far, I've loved it. So, so that's uh, 3.1 amp, uh, 5 volts. So that's not bad, actually. That's... Uh... Uh, I'm trying to think of what what is the the iPad charger I think is five amp I think for a fast charge but you know for what you're talking about like a watch and headphones yeah. and like a battery pack that you're probably going to charge overnight or whatever that's that's plenty you don't need fast yeah. charge on that sort of thing so exactly that's great yeah that's for ten bucks buy buy a pack and put a couple in your bag for traveling <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good absolutely yep. Awesome. Good. Well, mine, I also have a little bit of hardware that uh, I've picked up. So I get a little bit of a story with this one. I've talked about a while ago about a, uh, uh, who's it? A, the APC that they make the power supply, uh, the power supply. They had a smart, um, uh, what's the, the multi-port outlet thingy, power strip. Sorry, brain's not working. <laughs> smart power strip. Apparently I'm not smart, but they had a smart power strip that you could program with HomeKit to control each outlet separately. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. I can plug different things in. And we have a fan in our bedroom and we like having the fan on, uh, but we don't, we don't want it to run all day. So we have a, I want it to come on at bedtime and turn off when it's time to wake up because that helps me wake up when the fan's not on <laughs> with having the fan go off on a timer. So, uh, it, which is great, but except I found that the APC power strip wasn't, I don't know what time zone it was in, but it wasn't the American Eastern Standard Time. It was, you know, somewhere in China or something. Uh, it, it it was not coming on and off when it was supposed to be. So I'm like, ah, oh, what do I do? And of course, my wife was like, ah, you and your automations. So I went and found <laughs> the Wemo Belkin Wemo Mini Smart Plug, and it's, it's Wi-Fi enabled. It works with. Uh, uh, Echo. I don't want to say the word. Echo, Google <laughs> Assistant, and HomeKit. And it's very small. It, it, in fact, I have it plugged into the power strip now, uh, and it only takes up the one, the one outlet in it. And uh, it has a button right in the front if I want to just do it manually on and off. But it also, I can also do home automation pl- uh, programming, and so I have it on a schedule now. And it's only seventeen ninety nine which was a pretty wow. good deal. So uh, very nice. The mini smart plug. And you can also get it in a three pack for uh, $76, which isn't such a good deal. But uh, the yeah. individual one uh, pack is is a pretty good deal at uh, $17.99 so for, for programming. So I could say right now, here, I'm going to try it right now. Alexa, turn on the fan. Now it's going to try it. And... Aha! I've just turned the fan on on my wife, and she's wondering, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and since I'm recording a podcast, she can't come in and complain. She's probably reaching across the bed to turn it off right now and cursing at me. So that's good. A little, little uh, behind the scenes there. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, let's, I'm, I'm getting uh, tired and silly. So uh, let's move on. Uh, so those are our picks of the week. Hope you enjoy those. If there's anything in there that uh, might become part of your life, that's why we do it. Uh, as we finish things out, I want to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of technology, including uh, Victor S., Heather C., Victor L., we have two Victors this week, Kevin G., and Colleen R. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of technology and all the shows at StarQuest. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. 
So that's it from us. Uh, what do you have for uh, to, if you have anything you want to say about our discussion, any feedback, anything you'd like to, to send in, any comments, let us know by going to sqpn.com slash technology or the SQPN Facebook page, facebook.com slash StarQuest Media, or send an email to technology at sqpn.com. And of course, I'll put links to all of the headlines and our picks of the week on our show notes at sqpn.com. Please remember to like the, each episode as it shows up on our Facebook page, retweet it on Twitter where we're at SQPN, leave us comments, and become part of that online community too. We have a lot of great uh, folks who have we have discussions, we have questions, uh, we have some interactions, and we really appreciate all of those with you uh, in social media. So until next time, Father Andrew Kinstetter, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of technology. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Uh, and also, I want to pitch right now uh, on Monday, May the 4th, yes. join us on Facebook Live on at Facebook.com slash StarQuest Media for a special Star Wars May the 4th Facebook Live event. Uh, Father will be there with the whole the panel from uh, the Secrets of Star Wars podcast. It's going to be a lot of fun. So be, sh be sure to join them for that. Uh, There's also going to be a few surprises coming down the, ooh, the line, hopefully. Ooh, cool. So stay cool. tuned. Surprises. Uh, Darth Pas Vader going to join you? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Oh. Nobody expects Palpatine to show up. <laughs> so, uh, okay, we got to get out of here. Pat Scott, thank you as well. <laughs> Adios from Texas. And once again, I'm Dom Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to The Secrets of Technology on StarQuest. 